use it as motivation? Is it, is it something that is even discussed? Um, I'm curious if, if you could take us through kind of, you know, how that, um, how that comes into the thinking ahead of these, these games. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it was definitely a, a tough time and a tough go last uh, World Cup qualifying. Um, but, I mean, as a group, I mean, we, we haven't really um, mentioned it. I think right now we have a totally different um, core of guys. And and right now, I mean, we're just kind of just looking forward to the task at hand, which is um, the first game is El Salvador, and to, you know, start off the, the tournament well and um, take it game by game. I mean, each game brings different challenges, but um, I think with the group that we have, I think everyone's ready and, and willing, and, and um, I think it's definitely positive looking into the, the matches. Next, we'll go to Sam Steskel from The Athletic. <clears throat> Thanks, Michael. Uh, Kellen, you were one of a very small number of guys who was part of both the Nations League and the Gold Cup. Uh, I'm curious, you know, obviously this group heading into qualifying hasn't had much time together at all the gold cup group got a decent amount of time together do you think it's significant kind of the difference between the the amount of time that, that those two groups got and how do you think it'll play out going into thursday that this group hasn't had much time together right i mean it definitely is always useful um you know spend a lot of time together i mean obviously with the gold cup it's a longer tournament the nations league was but i mean that's just the nature of the game you know you got to be able to adapt and adapt quickly and be ready. But I think, like I said before, we have a good group of guys, guys that um, that are experienced in the CONCACAF region, got a little bit of taste this, this past summer. And um, yeah, we got to be whoever's, you know, part of the starting level and or coming off the bench has to be ready. I think with everyone playing well at their clubs, I think that's going to transition into the national team. And we got to, you know, adjust quickly and um, build that chemistry right away. Next will be Ron Blum from the Associated Press. Hey, Kellen. Thinking back to the road qualifiers last time, why is it such a difficult task to win on the road? And what do you guys have to do mentally not to get thrown by when you have non-optimum field conditions like you faced the last time in Trinidad or Honduras? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the mental aspect of the game. I mean, regardless of the conditions, the, the weather, the field, we got to be up to it. And for all of us, I think um, we've shown in the past that no matter what kind of adversity is thrown our way, um, we've been able to adapt. I mean, so you look at the Mexico game in Nations League, you know, crowd throwing things, referees making different calls, maybe the field's not as great, but we were able and willing to adapt. And I think having that mindset coming into these you know, into these qualifiers, I think it's huge, especially getting a taste taste like that. Um, I think the guys mentally ready, physically ready, and um, we're gonna go out there and you know get the results that we want. Next will be Nico Contour from CBS. Thanks, Michael. Hey, Kelly. Um, a question regarding your position because I, I think in Nations League we saw you play a, a couple of different positions. If this was EA Sports, I think FIFA would be freaking out to try to sign you either CM or RB or, you know, they, they, I don't think they could pin you down to one position in Nations League, but then in Gold Cup, we saw you playing more of a similar role game to the game. So what's, what's the message from, from Greg to you on either how you need to adapt in, in this, um, in this three game window um, and, and, and what's, What's that going to look like for you go, going into this World Cup qualifier? Yeah, I mean, I'm not exactly sure where Greg wants to implement me, but either or I'm, I'm a guy that's, you know, willing to play wherever for the team, whether it's playing as a six position or as an 8-10 outside back. Um, I'm obviously going to give my all and give everything. Um, so, I mean, for me, it's just, you, you know, the, the positions are little details, and, and I mean, I'm experienced in, in that role and, and I've played in different games and played in different positions. So wherever, um, you know, I'm going to get asked to play, I'll be willing to do so and um, hopefully, you know, play at a high level and, and help contribute. Next will be Frank DeLampa from the Boston Globe. Great. Uh, Colin, um, just to follow up on Doug's question uh, real quick, I, this, this might be the last time you're getting this question about uh, 2017, but uh, can you guys use some of that as motivation, or how far you know has this team moved beyond that with so many new players? Yeah, I mean, we could definitely use it as motivation. Obviously, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a tough, tough road that that we had to face and, and to travel. And I think 
we you know we never want to go down that road again and um, so in that aspect we don't want to have that same feeling that we did back in 2017 and and use that you know um, as you go into these games as motivations to do whatever you have to do to win I mean sometimes you know you can play beautiful football but sometimes you got to get you know pretty gritty roll up the sleeves and grind out a result so you know whatever kind of way we have to do it as long as the, we get the result I mean that's the most important Next, we'll go to Tom Bogert from MLSsoccer.com. Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> uh, Helen, you know, with three game we, uh, three games in this match window, how important is it for you guys to have such a deep and talented squad like you do? And how do you think the squad is going to be able to handle something new like this? Yeah, it's definitely huge. I mean, I don't think anyone's expecting to play in three games in one window, but something that we have to adapt to. But like you said, we have a deep roster, and it's always the next guy up. I think we have a great group of guys to it, whoever is going to get the nod for the start or coming off the bench. I think we have a, a, a great group that that we're able to, you know, still implement Greg Saxis and systems, and, and um, you know, we're going to definitely be strong. A lot of competition in a lot of spots, and I think that just shows the overall growth of the team. And it shows that, you know, everyone's playing at a high level right now. We'll go to Ivis Galarsep from SBI Soccer. Hey, Kellen, I wanted to take you back to your first road qualifier. Uh, if you can remember, what can you remember about that experience? What, what kind of stands out when you think back to your first experience on the road in qualifying? And a follow up on the Nations League final beating Mexico in that kind of dramatic uh, game. What is that? What did that game do for this group? Do you think? Because it's obviously like twenty guys from that team that are on this group. What, what did going through that and winning that game? Do you think do for for the overall kind of confidence of, uh, and morale of this group? Yeah, um, my, my first road qualifier. It might have been like Saint Vincent, maybe. And um, yeah, no, it was tough. I mean, that that game brought different challenges that you know we're not typically used to. Whether it, you know, I think we played. In the afternoon, it was blazing hot. I mean, the field conditions weren't great, but like I said before, I mean, these games sometimes, you know, you can't play beautiful football like you want to. Um, yeah, at times you will, but sometimes we just have to grind and be gritty and, and most importantly, I mean, be sound defensively and, you know, capitalize offensively. And then just to touch on, um, you know, having that group from Nations League, it just shows that, you know, we we got a taste of what it's like to to endure you know different circumstances and and face adversity and and to embrace it and move forward. I mean, you know we could have you know just fell over and the game could have been done after we got scored on early on in the game. But the resiliency of the group to to move forward and keep battling, keep you know striving along was was huge. And I think it was important for us for the growth of the whole team um, to know what it feels like and and the different circumstances and and you know. Um, you know, the different variables of the game, whether the field, you know, you know, not getting the calls we want, you know, crazy fans, you know, mean the whole nine yards. Um, but being able to adapt and being able to, to keep moving forward, I think it was just huge. And I think it was great for us to, to you know, get a taste of that and that feeling and what it feels like, um, you know, to, to win that game because that, that really helped us grow in the long run. Next will be Jose Rodriguez. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, um, Kelly, I wanted to ask a little bit about, you know, El Salvador, they have so many players that um, were either born here in the U.S. or they grew up playing here. Um, do you think that would be an advantage for them, knowing that they pretty much understand the system, they understand the, the, the mentality that, that you guys have? Do you, would you consider that an advantage to the El Salvador? Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, you, everyone's kind of grown up in different areas and you know, has different playing styles to, to to be able to be, you know, to, you know, play in Europe at a younger age and adapting to that culture and bringing that here and, you know, guys from all over, I think it's definitely huge. And, you know, and obviously wearing the crest is, means a lot. And I know the guys, you know, um, wear with pride and coming here to, to, you know, take on Greg's system and tactics is definitely huge. And those guys have done a great job. And for myself is, you know, help those guys along the way. Um, you know, some guys, you know, just got their first caps within the last year or so. But qualifying is a different beast. And um, we've got to be up for the challenge and be ready from the first minute of the whistle. Next, we bind Shredda from American Soccer Now. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Kellen. Um, uh, Kellen, discuss your growth within this team the past year. Cause it's kind of remarkable. You're you outside of the team, um, not getting call-ups. And now you're part of two summer championships and World Cup qualifying. 
looking back on it, how tough was that? And what got you through it? Did you ever doubt yourself? Are you surprised with where you're at? And discuss that whole transition and your growth within the team this this year. Yeah, it was definitely tough for me. You know, having a you know a couple of year absence, it, it was probably the toughest things I've faced in my career besides like having an injury. I mean, I've I know I've been on winning teams and I've been on teams where I've played most of the games. And you know, having this obstacle for me was actually huge for my growth and maturity. And um, you know, no one ever wants to experience it, but sometimes it just happens. But I think that that really helped me grow, helped me, you know, re, re, change my focus and refocus on on the things um, that I can control. But it's you know, just putting my head down, and working hard, and uh, and moving forward, and just you know, be involved with the team. I think it was huge. I mean, um, as a player, you know, you always dream to be here, um, and you wish to be here. But it's the little aspects that that people don't realize is the stuff that you do in the dark and. And for me, I've just been, you know, just grinding, working hard, and, and hopefully I, you know, get the recognition that the, from the coaching staff to, to be called into the camps. And when in camps, just, you know, continue chugging along, and, and hopefully the hard work, you know, translates to the field. And then from the field, I can get the opportunity to play in the games. And, yeah, and it was, it's been a, been a good summer for me. And, and um, yeah, just moving forward, and, you know, the ultimate goal is to qualify for the World Cup and then be in the World Cup. So one game at a time, El Salvador, Canada, and Honduras, and then we move on to, to the next window. We'll take two more for Kellen. First will be Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. Thanks so much, Michael. Um, Kellen, you talked about kind of not wanting to go through what you guys went through before in 2017. The fan base probably feels the same way, and I'm sure you you guys are aware of kind of um, – just kind of the, the, the damage that was done, the, the feelings that exist there of, of what it was like to miss the World Cup for, for the fans. I wonder how important you guys look at it as far as restoring how people think about U.S. men's national team and, and soccer in this country on the men's side um, by getting to the World Cup, back to the World Cup, having a good performance in this, in this final round of qualification and kind of um, getting things back to normal. Uh, quote unquote, and, and how much you guys think about that as as you're on the the cusp of starting qualifying. Thank you. Um, obviously, that's definitely important. But for us as players, we're looking at it where we have desires to be in a World Cup, and we're that much closer to achieving that dream of ours. And so we take it, you know, game by game. Obviously, to have the rebuild and to, um, you know, um, rebuild from what we we experienced, you know, last cycle and moving forward to this cycle. Like I said, it's just. It's just complete desire for ourselves that, you know, everyone dreams of being a World Cup and ultimately holding up the World Cup. And um, I think for us as a team, I think that's, that's huge in that aspect. And we kind of just focus on what we can focus on and control what we can control. And you, like I said, just game by game. And, um, you know, once we get the result for the next game, then we move on to the next game. We just take a game by game and go from there. On that point, before we move on, I'd encourage everyone to visit ussoccer.com and review the only forward Solo Palante new campaign, which was designed in part in coordination with the players and coaches to develop a unifying message to talk about what you just described, which is moving forward and trying to accomplish uh, the goal of qualifying for the World Cup. Last question comes from Claudio Villalobos. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, Kelly. When uh, I mean there is a history historically the United States soccer player is a player that gives 100 percent even more in every game. Now that's that's positive all the time. But when when a window of such uh, close games, especially with traveling, going to El Salvador, coming to Nashville, and going back to Honduras, have you discussed with Greg um, how to manage the effort on every single game uh, so that that doesn't come back and haunt you? Not in a sense. We, we, I mean, obviously, three games in one window is tough. But for one, we, we take it game by game. Each game brings its own challenges, and we, we got to just attack ahead first. We can't really look too much into, you know, the second game or third game. But also, we also have a deep, deep roster. So it's always the next guy up. And so with that being said, I mean, you know, you, you can, guys can come in and out of the team and do the same job. And so I think that and having that deep roster is actually huge, and um, and it's definitely helpful for Greg, you know, moving forward into each and every game.